it's taken me longer than I wanted to do a video of how week three of treatment went. Um, I tested positive for COVID on Monday. It's now Saturday. Um, I'm still testing positive, but I do feel better than I did at the beginning of it. So the Thursday of week three, um, I saw the OT first and we spoke about fatigue. Uh, I hadn't realised that that might have been more of an issue for me than I realised. Um, spoke about what the warning signs of fatigue are again and how I can kind of combat them when I feel that happening. He said, like, you know, there's no easy answer on how to treat fatigue. Um, you kind of just have to go with what you find works best for you and not necessarily wait for these warning signs to happen. You know, try and and give yourself a rest before you get to that point. And then we spoke about the boom and bust cycle, which I imagine most people already know about. The boom where you have a really good day and you do way too much because you're feeling good. So you just want to carry on with it. And then a couple of days later or the day later, you have the bust where you, you've realised you've overdone it and you can't do anything. So we spoke about shaving activities and things off both ends of that cycle. And then I had CBT. Um, the week previous, I had been given a seizure record to fill out. And I had about 20, 21 seizures within that week. Um, and then we just tried to look for any factors that might be the same, like... Um, any triggering factors. Mainly, it was mainly tiredness, um, especially the first couple of days from the um, <clears throat> late transport home. Then we spoke about what I might be able to do differently to prevent a seizure, like the um, applied tension technique that I said about in the last video, or um, distraction and grounding techniques. So I decided to try and use the looking around the room and seeing how many things I could point out that were blue or the shape of a circle, things like that. Um, so I just thought I'd try that technique over the next week, see how that worked for me. And then I had physio. Um, we practiced the side to side step motion um, and then walking along the edge of the bed just to try and get the feel of walking from side to side and then put that into moving forward. There's a, a picture in the room and she asked me to think about where do I think that that picture is? What do I think it's of? And I don't know, my brain just went, ah, oh, geography. Like, I can't think of anything. And um, so that kind of distraction didn't necessarily work for me. But then she started asking me about what music I like, um, what bands I've been to see. And that distraction was a lot more useful. The, the picture would work quite well for other people. Um, just had to try different things. And then Friday we started with physio. Um, I was walking with the exercise ball in front of me, trying to keep my knee on it. As if you've watched videos before, you know, I've said that my knee snaps back. So trying to just focus on keeping my knee on the ball and not letting it snap backwards and then we progress to me walking behind my wheelchair um, just down the corridor using the side to side step motion that I'd learnt um, the day before and again the distraction of talking about something that I really like uh, so she asked me about things that were on my wheelchair all the stickers and um, the first one was of Charles Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine so then we just had a, a big discussion about Brooklyn and I managed to walk down the corridor, stop for a rest and then walk back again behind my chair. Then I had CBT again. Um, we spoke about my OCD possibly being a likely trigger for uh, seizures, but the OCD being my negative thought. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they are triggering seizures uh possibly I, I kind of just need to to work through that a little bit and 
see how I feel. That situation um, came up during CBT and it made me quite upset. Um, so we w worked through the alternative form, uh, alternative thought form again. Um, it was really hard to kind of write my thoughts down when they're so upsetting. But then in the long run, when I did the alternative thoughts, it kind of evened me out and it really calmed me down. She did notice that when I was upset, I was holding my breath. And she said she's noticed it before that I do hold my breath quite a lot. Um, and even the physios have kind of said to me, like, are you holding your breath? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I think I am. But I don't actually realise it. So um, I've been trying to practice mindful breathing. They said like at least 10 times a day just to try and make it routine so that I don't keep holding my breath. It's so simple when I do it. <laughs> and then she asked me to look through what I'd learned in my OCD CBT from last year and um, bring any relevant forms I thought might be necessary. And um, I saw the OT again. Uh, she said she noticed I looked quite tired, so gave me the option of what I would like to do. Um, I said I'd like to talk about the rest of the booklet, the fatigue booklet, as I found it quite interesting the day before. And then we just spoke about how I can try and avoid the um, uh, the boom and bust cycle. By this point, I was really kind of losing my concentration. And uh, she just sort of said to me that that was a question. And I was like, oh, no, I've totally blanked and, and missed like the past 10 minutes. <laughs> maybe not 10 minutes, maybe just a couple of minutes. Just before I left, she asked if I had any questions. Um, and I said that through CBT and learning about how my thoughts might be a trigger for the seizures um, and other symptoms that I just started to feel like, you know, this this is possibly my fault, which is something that I didn't expect to feel during this program because obviously you're there because you are believed and no one has made me not feel that way. It's just the whole process of learning that it's kind of, you know, perhaps sometimes my stressful thoughts, my negative thoughts that might be making things worse. How she described it to me was like, um, your brain has kind of already decided that you're going to have a seizure before you do have one. Well, you know, it's already decided that these symptoms are there, so they, they're kind of going to happen. Like if you were to pick up a water bottle, like you, you think about picking it up and then you go and do it. And to me, that kind of, that made sense. Like I, I, I liked that explanation and it made me feel a lot calmer. It might not make sense to anybody else, but it um, resonated with me quite nicely. And then that was it. We went to the transport and, oh my God, another like five and a half hours of, of waiting to be picked up to go home. Again, being the last ones in, in the boardroom waiting to be picked up. All the staff members had gone. It's it's just really bizarre. It's something that kind of needs to be thought about um, for future patients of this program. I think it's no, but it's not the clinic's fault at all. Um, it's not the receptionist's fault. You know that they, they all do everything they can, but there's just something going wrong along the way. So that was week three. Um, this week, obviously, I couldn't go, um, which I have been quite disappointed about um yeah but so I've just been doing I did them over zoom um and I will do another video on that um uh, I'm gonna rest my voice for a little bit now and then do want to do that in a couple of days and fingers crossed I will test negative soon so that I can go back up next Thursday fingers crossed thanks for watching bye